09, part 2, thermal treatments of metal and alloy. Annuling. Thermal treatment of metal, uh, one of them is annuling, which is uh, basically we expose a material to an elevated temperature for an extended time period and then the workpiece is slowly cooled. So it basically involves three main steps. The first step is heating to the desired temperature, the annual temperature, and holding at that temperature. This is the second step for an for a period of time. And then we will cool it, slowly cool it, and usually cool to our room temperature. So in such heat treatment, it can release stress due to an, an and increase the softness, the ductility to a, to a cold work metal work work piece, in which may be too brittle if the co uh, the co working of that metal piece is too much, and the annealing area can basically reverse the process of the of a co working of the co working. So, during annealing, the microstructure or the, the grains will change during the process. We have a uh, three, we have a uh, two main, two main phases. The first phase is the recovery phase, which the dislocation density is first uh, reduced because when the temperature is evaded, is increased, there is an increase in the dislocation movement um, due to the due to easier diffusion of the atom within the metal and as these locations can annihilate each other which has which I have mentioned in the before and that means the dislocation movement uh, such an uh, increase in dislocation movement can reduce the dislocation density and because of the reduction of the dislocation density the totality of the workpiece will increase, but with uh, strength, uh, but reduced strength. And after recovery, there will be a new creation of the new string-free grains within the microstructure due to the elaborate temperature. The original, original, original piece might be, might, might contains the core work Grains which are which contains string which are not which are not string free and the energy is stored into in the deformed grains and the dislocations and during such an uh, annealing process the original deformed grain will form the new undeformed grains where the, those new grains are string free you can have a look at this graph. And basically, it represents the microstructure change during such annealing process. The temperature for this crystallization during uh, annealing for pure metal, such temperature is about 2.3 uh, times the melting point of that metal. For some alloy, it can be as high as um, 2.7 times the melting point for such alloy. So, if the co-working percentage is higher, the crystallization temperature is lower. You can see such a um, graph, such a um, graph which represents the relation of temperature, the crystallized temperature and the percentage of the co-work of the, of the work piece, which you are, which is desired to be recrystallized. Time for recrystallization, basically, Higher temperature, the recrystallization required time is lower. As at the elaborated temperature, as a much more higher elaborated temperature, the diffusion rate is much more faster. Where the diffusion of atoms is required for the recrystallization, and also the also the annihilation and the reduction of the dislocations. 
which I have mentioned in the two slides before. Then you can see the graph between the relation of the temperature and the time required for start and completion of the crystallization process. So after I have introduced the annealing process, now I would like to introduce the quantum process. Quantum is a rapid cooling of a workpiece to obtain certain material properties. And the quantum, the for the property after a quantum of a material of an alloy can be predicted based on the phase transformation and TTT diagrams. And let's have a look if, for example, for, uh, for steel, what if we quench our steel? What can we predict? How can we predict the properties of the steel? For basically, for full handling of the steel, usually we use a furnace to cool, it, cool the steel slowly use a coarse perlite, uh, which have a larger green size compared to the fine perlite. Normalizing, um, it is uh, similar to full annealing. However, the cooling rate is uh, uh, higher, where we use the air to cool it to produce a fine perlite. And for quench, uh, for all quench, you can produce uh, numbers uh, of margin size plus perlite. For water quench, nearly all of them will be mountain sites. So basically, if we consider the cooling rate, for higher cooling rate, the steel will produce much more mountain sites. That means it is much more brittle, but the strength is much more stronger. Uh, in, uh, conversely, if the cooling rate is the slowest, the, the steel after the processing Will will be will be the most subtle along these four uh, methods, along these four methods without different cooling rates, and but however the strength it is lowest, and basically these four methods, water quenching, oil quenching, normalizing, full annual of the steel, all requires us to first heat the steel to temperatures beyond the eutectoid temperature, which is 700 something, you must larger than the eutectoid temperature. Because if you remember, uh, the from tutorial 8, from the phase transformation, uh, from the phase transformation of the steel, only alcosonite can be changed to perlite or monazite, and etc. So here is an example of uh, again forging a plate. So after for the for plate leaves, after they complete their forging process, and they usually um, reheat it to some temperature, and then the water or oil quench their red hot plate. What's the reason? What's the rationale behind it? So oh, the answer is they want to create the margin site and or and or perlite, fine perlite, which is much harder than ferrite, where therefore to increase their blade, blade hardness in the surface, because this in the surface area region, the temperature rate, the temperature dropping rate is the highest. And you can refer to such graph. The oil crunch and the, uh, and the water crunch will produce the mountain side or perlite or fine perlite which have a much harder, much higher strength. Okay, so we have a follow up question. Why this? Why it is not desirable to crunch a plate for too much time or for too little time? So Let's first talk about the too much time scenario. If we punch a plate for too much time, we will produce a lot more mountain sand and perlite, which is much, which is brittle, 
and the blade will become brittle as well, which is not good for blade. And let's say for this unfortunate pig, and this man use a blade which have punched too much to try to slice the uh, the pig into two half. However, it failed, and the blade broken. It's broken because it is too brittle. And if the quantum time is too little, uh, yes, the case is basically reversed. Reversed. There is not enough muscle size and the fine pro life form, and most of the blade is uh, should be in in the face of the of fair ferrite, which is not hard in hardened enough, and the resultant blade will be too subtle, and basically the pig is actually not even scratched in this case. And actually these two pictures are from uh, Forge of uh, Forging Fire, which is an uh, uh, interesting TV show, which actually I find it there has some uh, knowledge or, or some practical application of the of the heat treatment for steels and you can actually try to have a look. So uh, for quenching, we have already discussed if we quench a steel, uh, you can create uh, various hardness uh, after quenching of, of the steel. And how can we determine uh, the hardability? And how can we um, have a rough uh, measure of the result of the after when, when we quench a steel? So we define hardability as the ability or steel alloy with a particular composition to transform to modern size for a particular quantum treatment. And as you know that modern size has the highest hardness um, in terms of microstructures which will which is possibly which can be possibly exist in a uh, steel. And we can use such tests, Germany and quantum tests to help us to determine the hardenability or the hardenability curve for the for steel alloy. Basically, we have a water spray at the bottom of the preheated steel, which have um, heated to uh, above the utensil temperature. And here's a specimen, and here is the mount. And at here, the heat transfer rate will be highest and the temperature dropping rate will be the highest. And because of here, the heat transfer rate will be, the temperature dropping rate will be lower due to there is, heat trans, there is a heat transfer rate here and you need time for heat to transform here from here to here. And here, at here, the temperature drop rate is even lower and even lower, and here is the lowest. So we will have uh, the expected result or expected curve for this uh, test will be at this point, the hardness will be highest and this one will be slightly lower and lower and lower and here is the lowest as it is because due to the various uh, the difference of the temperature dropping rate. As I mentioned in the previous slide and you can see from the PTT diagram, for lower temperature drop rate, the resultant the resultant steel will be, um, the resultant quenched steel you have a lower hardness and the reverse are also true therefore we will have assess we will expect such curve from such test so for hardenability curves we have these two uh, examples um, you can see that here is the distance from the point to the end and here is the hardness, which is in HRC scale. And here is the percentage of the modern site. And here is the cooling rate. And, and we can also discuss the carbon contents, the effect of carbon contents and the other alloying elements in different kinds of the steel alloy uh, on their hardability. For more carbon content, the, the maximum hardability of the steel alloy will be increased. Because more carbons can, uh, can be um, 
can be used to form the modern sites. And this graph actually shows, this curve can actually shows for different amount of carbon content. For, uh, for steel, it will have a different maximum amount of the maximum probability, which is here, shown in my course, shown around my course. And you can see that for highest weight percent of carbon, you will have the highest probability and highest hardness. And for lower carbon content, it is lower and etc. So this is about the carbon content. But for alloy elements, it will increase the hardability in lower cooling rate, but it does not affect much maximum hardability. As it delays the austenite, the alloying element delays the austenite transition to ferrolite and to bainite reaction. And therefore, the austenite can only transform to martensite instead. And we know that for martensite, it, will, it has the highest uh, hardness compared to other uh, microstructures such as um, perlite and bimite. And you can see that, however, for those alloying elements uh, atom, they cannot be used, actually used in to form more mountain site eventually. But uh, so therefore, their maximum hardness, let's say for different kinds of alloying elements addition, um, your maximum hardness is uh, relatively close to each other, which is shown in this graph. More crunching. So, in actual crunching process, uh, crunching cost will cause a cold surface on the work workpiece, and which is a rapid formation of the martin side, because the surface will have the highest temperature dropping rate because this is the coast which is the closest to the for to, to a cold uh, medium for, for example if you put a blade in crunching in water to crunch the surface will be first hardened instead of the uh, in, in, in interior so therefore inside the steel workpiece it will be still hot and because the heat transfer rate is not uniform throughout the workpiece and therefore their temperature dropping rate. And for hot, they will have a higher volume. For cold, for cold, um, for cold workpiece, they will have a, a smaller video volume. And there is a uh, stress induced in the workpiece. And due to such a uh, induced stress, as modern side is brittle, it may crack. The surface when the metal side may crack during such process, which is not desired. So we have actually in the actual um, crunching process, we may have a process like mark crunching. Basically, we first keep the temperature of the uh, going of the workpiece to some temperature slightly higher than the mountain side formation temperature Art until the uniform temperature uh, is um, obtained within the whole steel workpiece. Then we can really crunch it to some temperature below the formation of the mountain site. And as by this way, it can minimize the internal stress as the, it can minimize the temperature dropping rate difference between the interior of the steel workpiece and the exterior of the steel work, uh, workpiece. Tempering. Tempering is basically we first heat the metal to some temperature below the critical, critical point, um, which is the austenizing temperature. For steel, it is the austenizing temperature. And for a certain period of time, then all the way to cool in steel air, which is usually done after crunching. And which is actually heat has a similar, it has a very similar uh, principle with anything. However, uh, the temperature is lower in this case. The the, the raised temperature is uh, lower compared to anything. It is and it is all uh, often done after the crunching, and it increases the tactility with little decrease in strength. And in overall effect, it will increase the toughness of the rock piece.
So for tempering of the alloy steel, it will have a four in four phases. The first phase will be the desiccation of the very small carbides. As the temperature is now um, raised and it all uh, the diffusion is more now now far faster and the carbide will start to dissipate and, and then after the first uh, region which is here then is the formation of the left light left light it means small strip small strip ferrite and cementite and basically um, basically the ferrite which is the alpha of a um, iron and the cement at FB3C will form and which is have a very small structure, very small size. And after the stage two, the phase two, it will come to the phase three, which is the carbon formation with the alloying elements. And afterwards it will be sterilization, which is the formation of the sterile dice in the final part uh, final um in the final phase. So in this four phase, the hardness is first um, first reduced and then right raised to a certain point due to the formation carbon form carbon formation with the alloying elements and then will still drop during the due to the sterilization. And the elongation or the hardness will rise during this process. So, thermal treatments of metal alloy, precipitation hardening, or in other words, aging. Some alloys' hardness and strength can be enhanced by the formation of extremely small and uniform dispersed particle of a second phase within the original phase. And such small particles of the new phase are called the precipitates. As such precipitates will hinder the dislocation movement. Uh, which is uh, basically this dislocation site, and then which will hinder the plastic deformation, and therefore it increases the strength for the material, and which you can have referred to tutorial five. And however, only some alloy can be subject to such treatment, such as aluminium uh, copper uh, copper alloy. So. How can we uh, use such method for some uh, precipitation hardening, hardening for some metal alloy? Basically, the requirements for for the alloy which can be used uh, to be to have uh, such precipitation hardening have a uh, will have a uh, phase diagram similar to this one. Where for this uh, phase diagram, it is um. For it is in general this type of the alloy which can be used for aging or precipitation hardening. First, the alloy is heated to key key lock, which have only one um, solid state, which is the alpha state only. Key lock is here, is the red dot here. Then it is quickly quenched to T1. And the, it, because it is quenched, quickly quenched, the temperature drop rate will be very, will be very rapid. And doing such rapid process, the, uh, the another phase, another solid phase will do, will not have time to form the second phase um, precipitate within the original phase matrix because the time is very the, the time elastic is very small and very short, and uh, and in this short period of time, the temperature have already dropped to very low. Which uh, which diffusion rate will be very very slow, and and therefore the large precipitate will not be formed during such process. And then after it is quantum T one, it is reheated to some to some temperatures, um, which is uh, above T one. So for example, T two, and be careful that. T1 and T2 must be uh, in this region, which is have in this region where you have a uh, second phase, second solid phase. And because the temperature is now elevate and the diffusion rate is now higher, and by this way we can control and 
estimate their final second phase precipitates the size of those precipitates and then by this way we can control their hardness and result in the strength for and basically for higher t2 the agent speed will be faster it is uh, pretty not uh, logical because for higher temperature the diffusion rate is much more higher so if we plot the temperature with respect to time it will have a following two things first one we first uh, heat heat it to t0 t or t log and then we crunch it and then we, we heat it to t2 and then we will and then we just uh, reduce it to the new temperature and there is a microstructure change during the aging the first is just after the quantum uh atoms see you in the for in the following graph um in the following system it is the aluminium and the copper system uh heaven CU, which is the second phase, uh, which is going to form the second phase uh, small precipitates, haven't diffused to form a second phase, just like this one, just like in case uh, in A, here the CU have haven't um, haven't have the time or temperature to um, diffuse to form a second phase precipitate, just like this one. After precipitate heat treatment for enough time, coherent second phase precipitate will form. Which will which induce a combustive or tensile string and hard which hinder the dislocation motion and which increase the strength of the materials. Basically, if you if you elaborate the temperature to T2 for a super low um, period of time, you will start to form the um, second phase particle with a uh, piece of a with size uh, which is suitable, such as the picture like this. And however, if the aging time is too much, then it will start. Uh, it will get bigger and bigger, and eventually, the uh, incoherent second phase precipitate will be formed, which actually decreases the strength for the materials. As in this case, um, there will be no convective of tensile strength will uh, induced by this uh, second phase particle. So uh, there is an example to summarize uh, some of the key elements for the thermal treatments. We consider two materials. The first one is the steel, and the second one is the copper aluminum alloy. Both of them who are heated to just above their usual temperature. For uh, for for example, uh, for, T, uh, for steel, it is the T1 steel, and for aluminum, it is the T1 uh, aluminum, respectively. However, the temperature will not reach their melting point respectively. And then these two um, materials is quite quickly with a very high heat transfer rate. And the temperature is uh, dropped to the T2 steel and the T2 aluminum respectively. Finally, they are reheated to some temperature, um, T3 steel and T3 aluminum, just below uh, T1 steel for steel and T1 aluminum for the copper uh, aluminum alloy. So, uh, sketch the U stress versus the time curve for those two metal alloys after the uh, in the in the thermal treatment process and start with the at the temperature T2 steel for steel and at the temperature T2 uh, aluminum for aluminum and will be time equal to zero. So how can we do it? So let's go for steel first. We will have the following uh, sketch where the U stress is decreased with respective, respective to the time. It is because the final heat treatment step uh, after uh, let's say after the T1 steel is, uh, is uh, achieved. Uh, the temperature is elaborated so to some temperature um, higher than T1 steel, which is T2 steel, for, uh, for a period of time. And such a process is basically the tempering of the steel, and which reduces the strength of steel because uh, due to the some carbide precipitation and the sterilization of the steels, 
Um, actually, such tempering of steel is not high annoying as it does not mention the cooling process after uh, raised to T3 steel. And annoying, you should remember that there, there involves a cool, cooling process after uh, the delivery temperature. For steel CU AL alloy, we have a uh, different kinds of use uh, stress uh, sketch. And the use stress will first raise to a certain point, and then it will still drop. It is because the copper aluminum alloy is first heat to some points above the utensil temperature, but below the melting point. At this phase, here the phase will be the homogeneous solid solution. And then such alloy is quickly quenched. And during such process, uh, a supersaturated solution will be formed. When the temperature is raised again to temperature free aluminum, the small second phase precipitate will start to form and raise the strength of the alloy, which is basically the principle of aging. However, after a long time, at this temperature, the second phase precipitation does go too large, and which is uh, inco which is incoherent with the surrounding matrix, and it will start decreasing the strength of the alloy. And basically, uh, we have a remark: the steps mentioned in question seven for the aluminium uh, for the CU alloy, EO alloy is basically the steps of precipitation hardening of such alloy. Oh, basically, congratulations. Uh, this uh, tutorial now will be the last tutorial or last main tutorial videos for Mechan 2410 in this UER project. So, congratulations. So, if you have really watched all of them, so I hopefully you will have um, some more understanding about the basic, basic concepts which have talked in the Mechan 2410 course, which is the uh, engineering materials. And good luck with the homework and exams. And I, ho I actually hope that you can really, really understand those concepts. Because if you understand those concepts, you will really understand why, let's say, uh, why, why, those, um, why those people, when they forge a plate, they will have such trip. And actually, this is pretty fun if you really understand it. I think so. I thought yes. So and there is some final um, there's some some final sentence I would like to mention. And as I have mentioned in the introduction um, video for our for my for our tutorials. Mechan 2410 requires students to have a good understanding of the, of those uh, concepts and those processes. Uh, actually, the, the exam actually I think it is more focused on the explanations of the phenomena and um, and the calculation part are not that difficult. I would say if you compare it to other mechanical mechanic causes such as the fluid and solid mechanics. So uh, in later time we may add some extra tutorial videos for these courses, which uh, is uh, actually some supplementary knowledge for Mechan 2410. For example, the dimension analysis and Excel graph plotting, which you will be used in labs, etc. And actually, that depends on our availability, so I cannot guarantee that um, I will have it now. So, um, um, I, I would say, um, I'm, it is my first time for making this kind of those tutorial videos. So, there will, will certainly there will be, I would say, a lot of mistakes. And if there is any errors or in these tutorial tutorials or any suggestions, like uh, including more contents or try to or improving my presentation skills or my narration skills 
or please don't hesitate to leave a comment and or tell us. So uh, that's really the end for the nine tutorial main tutorial videos. So good luck and bye bye.